Howdy friends, Brian Flushing of Mad River Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools and welcome back to another one of our fly tying tutorials. Today I'm going to show you one of probably the most popular carp flies of all time, the Clouser Swimming Nymph. Well, we, by the way, we appreciate you all watching the carp and uh, DVD that we posted there here on YouTube. Um, and thanks for the comments, man. It's been really cool to get all the feedback and see this wave that's still going on of, of carp fishing. But as I stated in the original DVD, the Clouser Swimming Nymph has really been one of the more popular carp flies of all time. And in recent years, they've become hard to find. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to tie one today. We're gonna tie a couple variations. Uh, and I do something a little different with this, which obviously I'm about to show you. But also want to make the announcement that uh, we are going to start tying these in-house. They've become really hard to find out there in the, in the world. So we're going to start tying them in-house. And uh, they should be up and available on our website uh, in decent stock here very shortly. And again, a couple of the variations that I'm going to show you. So uh, let's get started. Uh, for the hook, I'm using uh, TMCO 2302. And of course, now I can see it. Uh, TMCO 2302, and I like to tie these on a size 10. Um, you, you could do it really whatever size you want, but eight or 10 is gonna be the best for a carp nymph. And the 2302 is a slightly curved hook um, and then it's got a decent wide gap, and it's certainly heavy enough wire for uh, most of your carp fishing. And then I am going to put a bead head on this. This is one of the differences. You don't see this, this fly sold out there in the real world with a bead head very often. And as you all know from watching carping and, and uh, rooting around, that it's very important to have this fly ride hook up. Okay, we're going to talk about this a little further. That's something that, um, you know, we kind of knew, but in the original DVD, I don't think I stressed it enough. But a, a good carp fly has got to ride hook up. And we're also going to put a little bit of lead wire on here. I'm just going to put, I don't know, seven, eight wraps, something like that, of lead wire. I'm using 020 20,000s and I start kind of right in the middle of the hook shank and I'll kind of wrap up to just behind the bead on this. By the way, I'm using a, a copper bead on this. I, I've just kind of found that uh, at least the carp around here tend to prefer the copper uh, over the gold. You know, it could be my imagination, but I tend to use copper beads uh, or black beads on some of my patterns. Um, but on this one, I tie it with uh, the copper bead. Come in with the insides of my scissor blades to trim that wire so you're not messing up the tips of your, of your good scissors. And then you can start your thread right over top of that. You could start your thread before putting the wire on. It really doesn't matter. So, uh, and uh, for those of you that have seen me tie before, you know I'm not a thread guy. I use pretty much whatever's in front of me. But I did select the Ultra Thread 70 denier. Um, I'm going with a dark brown color. But uh, if you tie this fly right, uh, the fish ain't never going to see the thread color. So I'm not too worried about it. And I'm just kind of wrapping through that lead. And of course, I like to build up a little ramp. from the, the hook shank and boom, wrap your thread back. Now I'll go a little bit further uh, than typical on this. I go a little bit past the barb, past the uh, definition of the bend of the hook for when I tie this tail in, it's gonna push it so that when this fly is laying on the bottom, uh, it looks a little bit more natural, kind of has that curved profile, goes along with the hook shank, and maybe looks like possibly a little crayfish laying on the bottom, but that tail should be sticking up uh, a little bit. So I'll just go slightly past the bend on this, okay? And then the original pattern calls for rabbit strip on the tail, which we're not going to vary from that. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm tying uh, 
nymphs or streamers like this, I used to, I like to use these magnum rabbit strips. I just get uh, typically a little bit longer length and a lot more bulk to this. So the magnum rabbit strip is what I'm using here. And I just grab, once again, the scientific amount of a bunch, kind of uh, use your good old eyeballs to kind of get an idea of that. And then I'll trim that off the hide there, making sure you don't get any hide in there. And then I'm going to kind of even these tips a little bit. Just the way you cut it off can kind of, so I'll even them up and then I'll pull out some of the really long guard here. Okay. So I've got that bunch in be pinched between my, my index and my thumb. And I want this tail to be maybe about half or a little bit longer than the shank length. So I've got my thumb and my index right over the eye and I'm just kind of measuring that. And now I'm going to switch hands and then place that right there. Now I can make a cut and I'm going to make this cut and trim those butts so that now the butts are going to match right up to where the lead wire starts right there. So once I tie this in on top of the hook shank, I shouldn't then have to make a cut. It just lays right in there just like butter. Okay, I got my tail on there. And now you can also make your final wraps backwards. And again, make sure that you're wrapping a little bit down the bend so that this tail can'ts can'ts a little bit. In this case, downward, but when this fly fishes, uh, that tail is going to be canting again upwards. Okay. In the tail, uh, I've seen, uh, I typically put uh, a couple of strands of crystal flash and then the original also called for a couple of strands of flashaboo. So uh, I pull off and I like to use a little bit of orange on this, uh, just a slight tinge of orange. Um, for some reason, carp seem to like it. Um, orange and copper are really, as far as bright colors go, really about the only two bright type colors that I'll use. So I've, um, you guys have seen me do this before. You cut a triangle in the bag. That allows you to keep your crystal flash in the bag. Reach in with your scissor points and just pull out. I'm sure you've seen me do that before. And I'm going to take just two little strands and I'm going to lay it on this side of the hook shank. I want this to be along the sides of the tail. And I'm going to put it in the proper place and tie it in using two wraps and I'll uh, or more and wrap up to basically the, that full length of where you tie it in the tail and now you can take those other two strands place them in position on the other side and then wrap back to the bend that puts those two strands of crystal flesh right there in place and now I can come and trim that to the proper length about the same length as the tail okay and then I'll take a couple of strands of crystal, or excuse me, flashaboo, sorry. I'll take two strands of flashaboo and do the exact same thing. And let's see, trim those ends. Those aren't perfect, so trim them. And then I'm going to lay them, same deal. I'm going to lay them right on, side, on the side of the hook shank. I'm going to wrap forward keeping them in position, and then I can lock them in. There we go. And I lay those on the other side of the hook tank, same technique that you just did with the crystal flash. And then trim that to the proper length, okay? I try, of course, then to set aside the crystal flash and the flash of boot to use on the next one I'm tying. Doesn't always work that way, but. Uh, and again, now you can adjust and make sure that you're wrapping down the bend of the hook a little bit there. And you got yourself a tail, okay? Now, I'm gonna put a, the traditional Clouser Swimming Nymph calls for a gold oval tinsel rib. This is the gold oval tinsel in the size medium. And I'm just going to 
do the same that I did with the tail. Just tie that in right there uh, at the bend or a little bit past the bend up to just behind where the lead starts. And then again, wrap back to the bend of the hook. And the dubbing, there's all kinds of dubbing you can use on this. I think Bob uh, at one point said uh, he, he didn't really care what dubbing it was as, as long as it uh, was a, a wet fly suitable. So I've kind of taken to using this uh, craw dub. The craw dub, of course, a product we sell here at the shop. And it's, I think it's a, a blend of synthetic and some natural. But I just like the colors. And the synthetic in there gives it a nice little sheen. You might be able to kind of see that. Um, it's easy to work with. Uh, and, and I mostly just like the colors of it and how it works. So now I'm just going to dub a simple body. And I'm sure you've seen thousands of videos on proper dubbing techniques. But make sure that you don't put too much dubbing on there. That's the number one problem with people learning how to dub is they put too much. So I just put uh, a mere whisper of dubbing. Just a little bit. You pull it out of the clump and spin it onto your thread. This is going to take you a couple of installments, okay, because we want a nice tapered body on this. And I'm going to wrap it up to about the halfway point, I would say, on the hook shank. Maybe a little past the halfway point. And we'll do, looks like, one more strand of dubbing here should get us. Again, with any nymph, you want to have some semblance of taper. You want it to be a little thinner and get a little fatter as it goes up. And gives you that nice tapered look like a, like a nymph. And let's go one more bunch on there, and this should be perfect. Whatever dubbing you've got left, set it aside because you're going to use it again for making the thorax. Then I'm going to take my uh, gold tinsel, oval tinsel, and just give it a rib, some sem semblance of segmentation there, and I'm going to tie off that rib. And trim it with your scissor points. Okay. Three more parts. We're going to make a wing case out of peacock hurl. We're going to add legs using the hen back. And that's going to, all going to be over top, again, a craw dub thorax. But here's where uh, my fly, the, when, when I tie these for carp in particular, here's where it differs. I'm going to flip this upside down in the vise. Okay, and now, again friends, uh, it always seemed kind of silly to me. You want this fly to ride hook up and it's going to because of the lead wraps and the bead head that you put on there. And if you tie this standard style and this fly is laying on the bottom, the wing case is invisible to the fish for the most part. So I flip it upside down, and I'm not going to now tie the wing case on what is theoretically the underside in traditional way of thinking. Uh, but when this fly is riding on the bottom, uh, you're going to see that that wing case is then visible to the fish. So we're going to grab, a uh, again, scientific amount of a bunch. If I had to tell you exactly, uh, I would say about seven or eight strands of peacock curl. You want this to be fairly generous. Uh, actually, let me, tell, let me tell you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven strands of peacock curl. I'm going to cut it off uh, the little cuticle part at the base where it came off the hide of the bird. And now you're going to tie this in right there. Again, you're a little past the halfway point on the hook shank. I've lashed over those butts all the way up to the eye. And now, you can adjust the, uh, the proportions here. If your wing case doesn't look like it's quite going to be long enough, okay, which mine doesn't there, just go ahead and continue wrapping back. 
And yeah, you're wrapping back over the abdomen at this point, but it doesn't matter because you're going to cover this with more dubbing and you're going to put some legs on there. So I just adjust, actually, I'm going to go a little further back. And then once you're happy with that, that should be about right, right there. Okay. Now we're going to add a hen back feather. I'm going to grab a medium sized hen back feather. It's not overly critical. Um, pluck him out. And then I want to tie this in by the tip. So for those of you that have seen me tie soft tackles, uh, I've got these old uh, just pair of tweezers. This is one of the old AK best fly tying tools tweezers that I bought probably 25 years ago. Um, and they're just perfect for grabbing the tip of that feather, stroking the rest of them back and you create a nice little triangle tip there on that. And I'm going to come in, lay that triangle right on the underside of the hook shank and then lash that, lash that in. And those are going to become your legs. Okay. And now I'm going to dub the thorax again, using the same crowd up. Now you want this to be as with most nymphs, you want this to be quite a bit thicker than the abdomen. Again, creating that semblance of the thorax region, which contains the legs and the wing case. And this is usually two to three installments. I go ahead and run it right up against the bead. All right, one more round, here we go. Make that thorax a little bit fatter. And then you eventually wind up with that thread hanging right behind the bead. I don't jam too much right up against the bead because remember we, uh, we still have to tie off that hen back feather and then I have to fold over the wing case and then finish the fly. So I, I didn't jam a bunch of dubbing right up against that bead. Okay, I'm going to grab some hackle pliers, grab onto the stem, and I usually get about three turns. Now, when you start to wrap this feather, it's really important that you come in with the opposite hand, your left hand, and stroke those fibers back as you make each wrap, okay? And I usually take about three turns with my thread to secure it right behind the bead, and then come in with your scissor points and trim that stem off, okay? Pretty buggy looking right now. I'm gonna throw one extra security wrap with my thread to make sure that I get down in there behind that bead, okay? Now, <clears throat> the last step is we're gonna fold the wing case over. This is super easy, you've done this before. <clears throat> but I'm gonna fold the legs out of the way, just kind of stroke them down so you're not trapping any and they don't look like, a, he doesn't look like a, a peg leg nymph. So fold those out of the way so I get a nice clean shot folding the wing case over and then as I'm holding in place now I'm going to stroke those those leg fibers kind of backwards you're going to take your thread now I'm doing this with my opposite hand I'm hold I'm holding this in position with my right hand and then once you get about three security wraps over your peacock curl then I can come in and trim those butts. I'll kind of finish the head, stacking some thread right behind the bead. Just get kind of some of your strays out of there. This certainly doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I'll, uh, for those of you that have followed along, I don't even think I own a whip finisher. I think I show it in classes, but I don't use one myself. Okay, and 
Uh, you know that I'm a big fan of using half hitch tools, but in this case with a bead on there, I really can't use a half hitch tool. So what I'm gonna do is just finish this with my fingers right behind that bead. Making sure again that you don't trap any of those leg fibers. Cinch it down, give a nice little tug. A little bit buggier than uh, the ones that we used to buy. I think we used to buy these from Umpqua. Um, a little buggier, uh, but it's got all the components. And you can kind of see when that fly is going to be laying on the bottom. Now you can see the wing case. The legs are oriented in the right direction, and that tail is kind of sticking up. Whether this looks like a, a nymph of some sort, whether it looks like a little baby crayfish, uh, who knows? The carp usually don't tell me what they thought it was. But I'm telling you, and a lot of people will also tell you that the Clouser Swimming Nymph is one of their favorite uh, carp flies. Um, I also do a couple variations. The cool thing you can do, you can play around with the colors on this. Um, you know, uh, maybe you're trying to match a particular crayfish or kind of nymphs. Uh, that you have. You can play around with the colors of the flashaboo that you put in the tail, uh, change the color of the dubbing slightly. I do some in a rust color as well as this, um, I think this is called the tan. I'm sure it'll be in the uh, description or the recipe, which is always found on our blog, as well as the step-by-step -step photos. Um, Another variation that you can do on this fly is I've been using these, um, these mayfly beads from Nymph Heads. Okay, and I'll, I'll tie one up. Uh, in fact, let me just do this. The fly, you're going to tie the fly exactly the same with one exception. Um, you're going to put this bead on first. And I like to use, for this, I use the, I think it's the clingers. The clinger and the crawler version of the mayfly beads. This is the size large, which is good for hook sizes 10 and 12. And when you put this bead on, you're going to make sure that the eyes are canted, that the eyes portion are on the underside, not on the top as you normally would. Okay, because remember, if you're tying this fly for carp and we want it to be hooked up, we want, um, we want this part. And these beads are designed so that the, the way that you position them on the hook, they're heavily weighted on one side to cause it to, to ride hook up. Um, so what I do is I'll normally start my thread and kind of wrap right up against that, that head. It's almost more of a, a particular head than it is a bead per se. And I'll just wrap kind of a little base of thread up against it there. And now to get that head to stay in the proper position, I take some UV finish. Um, this is a, a thin formula, which is what I use the most. And I squirt a bunch inside the head there okay and now get it in position get your light ready get it in position and then hit it with the light and that's going to lock it in the proper position and now you can tie the fly just as described um, i usually if i'm using the um the tungsten mayfly beads from flyman because they are tungsten, they're a hell of a lot heavier than a standard bead head. There's also a lot more mass there than a standard bead head. So I usually eliminate the lead wire. The only drawbacks I've seen from using these is, first of all, they're a lot more expensive than a standard bead. And then um, at times, I've seen where this fly hits the water a little too hard, splashes, and can spook a carp. Okay, so now I've got that bead in position. I can turn this hook over, tie the flies, you just saw me do it before, and um, there you go. You know, another variation that I tie um, is 
I leave the bead off and tie it on top of the hook so I don't flip the hook shank. And I tie this in olive, an olive brown, yeah, or it's called brown olive, excuse me. Brown olive, um, and man, this does a great job of imitating the little baby sculpins that we get here on our home rivers in the Mad and the Clear Fork. Um, and the brown trout just love to eat these little one, one and a half inch sculpins. Uh, and this has been a fantastic nymph in that olive color for us here, uh, trout fishing, brown trout fishing on the mat. So uh, I'll, I'll twist one up and we'll show you a picture of that one, but it's just a standard clouds are swimming nymph uh, in the olive color with no bead head on it. So there you go. Primarily, I think known as a carp fly around here. Um, now you know how to tie it. If you don't tie, uh, keep your eyes on the, on the website. Uh, I'll have these, uh, even if I have to tie them myself, I'll just stay up late and have a few extra beers and twist them up so they'll be on our website. So as always, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit our blog where you're going to see step-by-step -step photos of tying this fly. And, um, and then there will be a recipe there with links to everywhere, where, every place you can get find this stuff on our website. So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned. We have mountains and mountains of information coming at you. Thanks for watching.